So this is our first lesson for the Intro to Java course. This course will take place every Wednesday and Friday, um, 3 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon PST Pacific time. Um, before we get started, let's let me talk a little bit about myself. So my name is Cindy Lee. I am 17 years old and a rising senior at Newport Senior High School in Bellevue, Washington. And so if for those of you who don't know, Bellevue is uh, very close to Seattle. So I live in the Puget Sound, greater Seattle area. Uh, in my free time, I like to read, play Minecraft with friends, swim, and definitely pull pranks on my sister. So right here is my sister. She is a rising third grader, and she is a fashion model, as you can see from the picture right here. And um, definitely one of the greatest sources of joy in my life. And we also have a family picture right here when we go to vacation like a couple weeks ago. That's my mom and that's my dad. Uh, for As for ex experience with CS, I have been learning Java for about two years now. Uh, I first started in freshman year, which was just watching YouTube videos and looking at problems online. So it wasn't really re um, any like systematic. Uh, last year, I took a AP CSA course at my school and I took the AP test, although the results were not yet. So it was definitely much more systemic. Uh, can everybody mute their mic while I'm talking? Thank you so much. All right, right now, can everybody uh, just share a little bit about themselves in the chat? Uh, you can format it like mine with your name, age, grade, and what you like to do in free time, and a little bit about CS. Like perhaps you know, already know a little bit of Python, perhaps you um, already know a little bit of Java, so this course might be easy for you. Um, perhaps your parents are software developers or CS uh, programmers, and that's why they got, uh, someone said, I have a long neck, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. All right. Also, this meeting, um, uh, is fully recorded. So if you have to leave early for or any other time complications, that's perfectly fine. Um, you will have the recording to go over. The class is an hour. Okay, we have lots of chess, chess players here. Also, Jeremy, I like your profile picture. Oh, drawing. <laughs> I took up sketching, but I really suck at it, so probably not gonna do that again. Mm, swimming, Kaylee. Oh yeah, I also used to swim before COVID, but then all the gyms in our area closed and I don't know if I'll get to swim again. Competitive badminton. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have another crochet lover here. That's nice. Hi, Rosalind. Also like to crochet, but I'm not that good at it. Just uh, curious, how many of you are also in the Python class uh, hosted all by One World Anchor? If you're, if you're also in the Python class, uh, is there a raise hand function? Or just do like a reaction? Oh, you self, self teach, that's interesting. Interesting. All right. Um, 
are we all done with self introductions? No. If we're all done, okay, great. Oh, someone's still putting anything in the chat? Let me ask again. Um, if are is everybody done with, uh, or how much time do you guys think you guys need more to um, talk about, introduce yourself to the class? Okay, everyone can put their hands down now. So we do have a few students that's also taking the Python class. That's good, that's good. Computer science is very interesting and uh, maybe taking two classes can, you know, help with each class. Okay, I'm gonna give it 10 more seconds if anybody else uh, is still doing the self introductions, put yours in right now. Okay, about 10 seconds is up. Let's move on to the next slide. So here is our lesson objectives for this class. We are going to introduce Java um, uh, and basic CS concepts. And, and then we are gonna actually work with an IDE and we'll get to that later. Uh, ignore the loud sounds in the background. <laughs> so what is computer science and what is Java? Well, first, computer science is the study of computers and computational systems. Computational systems are just devices that are able to process information. Unlike electrical and computer engineers, which you might have heard somewhere, computer scientists deal mostly with the software and software systems that we have in place. This includes like theory, design, development, and application of everything that's not tangible. So for example, while hardware engineers might be familiar with the actual parts that make up a computer, like the CPU, the screen, the keyboard, etc., software engineers make apps and programs that you can't physically touch but run on computer and phones. So that's the difference between software and hardware. Any questions? If you have questions, just raise, raise your hand or like unmute yourself and talk. Okay, no questions. Next, um, so there are many uh, branches to computer science, of course. For me personally, I want to go into software engineering, so which is a field both my parents are in right now. Um, it's actually a really broad field since the products that software engineers design ranges from applications for games to network control and operating systems. Um, but that's a topic for another time. Uh, here are a list of different branches in CS. Take a couple of seconds to read over them. And uh, if you guys are interested in possible career path, we can talk and discuss a little bit. But uh, of course, no pressure. You guys are still young. You don't need to decide what career you guys want to go into yet. And uh, also, if you have parents that are in um, uh, one of these branches, and you guys want to share a little bit, of course, uh, this class is very um, open to sharing. And uh, if you have any questions, again, put it, don't, don't hesitate to put your questions in the chat. So back to the topic at hand is what do computer scientists actually do? Well, in very broad terms, computer scientists make apps and programs that run on devices. The websites you browse, the apps you play, all of that are made by computer pro pro programmers and their code. 
Of course, things that programmers make are very different, which is why there are so many different fields. So how does coding actually work? Well, code, sometimes called computer programming, is how we communicate with computers. So code tells a computer what actions to take, and writing code is like creating a set of instructions. Okay, it's like commanding how the computer, like what the computer should do. By learning to write code, you can tell computers how to behave. Now, actually, we have a set of visuals. So here you can see there are two Sorry, my slide lagged a little bit. Here you can see that there are uh, two people and they are communicating and they have no problem communicating because they both speak the same language. Again, this is Mandarin Chinese um, and these two people have no problem communicating because they are both speaking a same language. Now here we have a person and a computer, but when the person speaks the computer, the computer doesn't understand. Likewise, when the computer speaks, computers sync and speak in um, binary, so the zeros and ones, uh, the human doesn't understand. However, when we have code, the code gets converted into a computer language, and then the computer can understand what we're trying to say. So what is Java specifically? So in terms of difficulty, um, Java, the coding language, again, it's like a language I use to communicate with other people. And we have a list of uh, coding languages here. And what is Java specifically? Java is one of the easiest languages to learn. Uh, I actually think it's the second easiest language right after Python. And um, uh, Java is relatively easy to learn because it's relatively easy to learn. It's a really common choice for beginner new programmers. Uh, I, Java is my uh, first language and a lot of people around me also either have Java or their or Python as their first language before moving on to like C, C++, C Sharp, that stuff. Um, now let's talk about simplicity. So Java is a relatively quote unquote simple language, um, but it's not as simple as Python. And we'll get to that in our later classes as to why you can compare code by Java and Python and see what I mean by that. One thing that makes it not so simple is that it's really unnecessarily wordy or clunky at times, which uh, makes it harder to comb through your thoughts. And that's one of the disadvantages I don't like about Java. If you have any um, prior experience with Java, or if you have any struggles that like you coded in Java and you don't like how it works, um, you can put it in the chat and... Oh, so let me take a look at uh, Ethan's question. So Java and JavaScript. Java and JavaScript are actually like two different, very different languages. They just have the similar name because um, when I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when JavaScript got developed, the person who developed it wanted to gain like a lot of fame, so they named it like similar to Java. Basically, it was like uh, almost infringing on copyright. Yeah, but it's two different languages. Um, I think it's actually quite a little bit harder than Java. Yeah, so it's two different languages. There's um, it's as two different languages, the differences are too many to count. Um, and uh, I think, is that all the questions? Uh, if that's all the questions, let me get back to the class. Um, now let's talk about Java's relevance. The relevance is um, actually quite high. So although Java has been around for a long time and many new languages have popped up since Java has been introduced, it's still one of the most used programming languages. Uh, there are multiple reasons for this, but it's um, basically one, Java is object oriented. What this means is that you can write a blueprint for something and then make thousands and thousands of objects with that one blueprint. You don't have to make like, if you want to create an object, um, mm, let's say you want to create a fake water bottle online. And you to make that you have to write a success specific specific set of instructions for the computer to do that, right? You For Java, you only need to write that set of instructions once to make thousands of water bottles. Um, but that is 
something that uh, non-object oriented languages can't do. Uh, we'll go more into details about object oriented programming in our later classes. Um, and, but if you, anybody already know this, you can like put your own input in the chat. Second of all, Java is supported on many different operating systems, including Mac, Windows, Linux. This means you can run the same application on different platforms. So if you wrote a code on this one platform and you wanted to run it on another platform, you don't have to change anything. It like literally runs on all platforms. And lastly, Java runs really fast. So this is because of something called multi-threading. Uh, which is a really complicated idea that we won't go into detail in this course. But basically what it means is that it executes many different actions simultaneously. Uh, for example, uh, I write a bunch of code and there's action one, action two, action three. And uh, it runs all those actions simultaneously. Now this is wildly, in wildly inaccurate, but this is just the foundations for this course. So it's very basic. <laughs> All right, next, um, let's move on to ID. Why, what is an ID and why do we need it? Uh, earlier we said code was a language of computers and to communicate comp with computers, we need to speak their language. But do we actually speak to computers? Well, um, I hope the answer that you guys say is no because computers can't hear you when you speak to them. So we need to write code out. Uh, and IDE or integrated development environment, uh, as one of the students said earlier, is a tool which sends the code that we write, want to write to the computer to the computer. So it's kind of like a, you can think of it as translator, like Google Translate, because um, it translates our code to like computer language, or you can think of it as a mail delivery system. You know, it takes the code we write and delivers it to the um, computer. Whatever way you like to think of it, um, that's the basic idea of what an IDE is. Now, there are many different IDEs out there. Wait, wrong way. Here. Now, there are many different IDEs out there. And uh, by many, I mean really many, many. Some of them are easy to use. Some of them are harder to use. And so below, I have listed some of the more common ones that I and um, our teacher assistant use. Uh, so I mainly use uh, IntelliJ, which supports Java as well as Kotlin, but I just use it for Java. Uh, it's really easy to use because it automatically formats things for you and imports stuff. We'll get to importing stuff later. Java is something that I had to use for my computer science class in school. It's uh, a, no, BlueJ is something I have to use for my computer science class in school. Um, it's a lot harder to use the IntelliJ, and um, because our school computers are not that good, it either crashes the computer or crashes the application all the time. But um, in BlueJ, definitely has a lot less components to the, the IntelliJ, so it's much easier to self-teach. When I had to self-teach myself using IntelliJ, I had to search for tutorials online, like what is this, what is this? But BlueJ, none of that stuff, because it doesn't have that. <laughs> Uh, now is Eclipse and Microsoft Visual Studios. Um, it's also pretty good, uh, but I don't use it often. Um, I mainly, uh, I think that's what our TA mainly uses. So I don't know much about it. And uh, one thing is that Eclipse uh, crashes. I heard Eclipse crashes when you are using with a lot of code and is not compatible for other coding languages, only Java. Uh, so for this class, we will be using Replit uh, or IntelliJ. I'm giving you a choice. So for Replit, I think this is the one we're going to mainly use for our um, class. So first is online. I, you don't need to download it. And it's easy to set up. And we can collaborate on it. That means if you have a question, you can just invite me. And I'll go in and check your code and uh, you know leave comments and, you know, so we can interact a lot more and it's hosted for free, but it, do, it does, need, does need a connection to the internet. And if your internet is uh, slow, um, what it will do is that it, your code will take a long time to actually compile and stuff. On the other hand is IntelliJ, it needs to be downloaded and it's a pretty big package. And also um, there's, uh, well, it's locally run, so you don't need internet, 
but um, there is some difficulty setting it up and it also crashes if your computer is slow. Now there's two editions. I think there's the normal edition and there's the community edition. The normal edition is not free, but it has a lot of the really advanced stuff that like my parents do because like they work as uh, software engineers for a living. I use the community edition because I don't need that like super fancy stuff. Um, but community edition has a lot of um, features as well. So I am going to actually show you guys how to uh, get to Replic because that is something that we will do uh, as a class. If you guys are interested in downloading like um, IntelliJ or IntelliJ, BlueJ, Eclipse, Microsoft Video Studios, any of that, um, you guys can put it in the chat and I'll do like a demo uh, during break for you guys, on you guys how to, to show you guys how to download it. Let me check the questions again. Yeah, Replit. <laughs> have, do we have any students that already use Replit? No, okay. Ah, why is it doing this to me? Okay, so yeah, you just search it up, yeah. This is a very uh, eager student, I see. So uh, let's just, let me demo it. Also, you guys can see my screen, right? Okay, good. Uh, Replit. And there is a login, just click on the login button. So I already have an account, but if you don't have an account, you need to uh, click sign up over here and sign up using these. And since you guys are not teachers, um, don't ignore, you can just ignore that. But I have an account and I will log in with that account. Huh. Okay, good. I didn't fail that CAPTCHA test. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I sometimes fail those CAPTCHA tests and um, question my whole existence. So once uh, it's just an account password, you are making an account for this. Um, website so you need to create a password that's uh and that password should not be your password for the email i mean it can be the same password if you use the same password but i, I like to use different passwords for different things so i just have different passwords and uh once you guys have finished creating an account um just raise your hand like this okay Raise your hand and then uh, I'll know if you have an account staff. Wow, Rosalind is, Rosalind is quick. Is that how you say your name? I'm sorry if I say it wrong, if, if I said it wrong. Um, you can call me Rosie. Yeah, and you uh, call me correct. Oh, okay, I'll just call you Rosie then. Cool. So we have students, three students who are already done. Uh, um, so we're just going to go find the um the coding Java thing and just just log in. Yeah. Uh, who's talking? Me, Sophia. Sophia. Okay. Hi, Sophia. So what we're gonna do is uh open your browser. Your browser can be anything: Firefox, Edge, Chrome. Doesn't really matter. Uh, open it up and uh, type replit, R E P L I P, and then hit enter. The first thing you show up is this, and we want to click and click on the log in button over here or so sign up. So replit, Does so rep, R E P L I T. Yes, R E P L I T. And then press the replet the something browser based on ID. No, you don't have to search up ID. You just have to search up replet. Yeah, I mean, 
Click on a link, replet the collaborative browser based on the on that. Oh, yes, that, yes, that's true. You click on that. Okay, um, if you click on it, you should have, uh, there should be a button on the top right for asking you to like sign up. So, um, so we click sign up instead of instead of login. Yes, you unless you have an account already, you sign up for an account. So you make an account. You make an account. You uh, come up with a username. Uh, here are a list of random usernames uh, that I have. You know. And then you enter your email, uh, whatever email that you com more commonly use, and then you make a password. What do you mean by email? Does it mean like your 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 family's email? Uh, do you have your own email? No. No. Okay. That's okay. So for this class, you can watch. Uh, of course, this is recorded after the class is over or we're going to take a break in uh, two minutes. During the break, you can uh, ask your parents to uh, help you set up. Um, but if you don't want to ask your parents right now, we can, um, you know, you can stay a little bit late after class and I can talk to your parents about how to set up. Is, is that okay? Okay. Is that okay? Sorry, you lagged for a second there. Yes, I said it's okay. Okay, good. Uh, for uh, a Replet account, an email is something that you like must have. So yeah. Okay, it's about half hour already. We are gonna take a two minute break or three minute break. Let's make it three minutes. During this three minutes, you can go grab a snack. You guys can go. Um, get a drink of water that stuff go to the bathroom we will rejoin at uh 3 33. okay see you later see see you later guys cindy i have a question oh yeah sure what's your question so um it says um i made my account i just made my account is and it says Hey, CCA Claire, let's get started. What's your skill level? What am I supposed to press? Is there an X button? Uh, usually for these surveys, uh, there's an X button. Oh, oh there's a skip button. Yeah, you guys, you guys just skip that. You don't, you can do that if you want, but um, I, you know, you don't have to do it. <laughs> it's and then a, now it says what, and now it says what languages are you primarily interested in? Pick three you don't have to i mean we are is asking you to have to pick three can you just skip yeah. that survey i can't skip it uh just say java and python and why is it taking so long and what uh, am i supposed to press python java is only two it says pick one more i'll pick you have to pick one more um just pick c okay that's weird. I didn't get one of those surveys when I um, signed up. And then now it says start coding an idea. What do I press? Are you sure that, um, are you sure there's no X button? Yeah, no, look. Uh, okay, one second. Um, just leave it like that and then there will be more demonstrations uh, after the break. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Also, can you guys see my screen? Uh, Ms. Lee? Yeah. Can we do some? My screen. Uh, yes. What is it? What is your problem? Can we, can we just do some tutorials? 
Are there tutorials of what yeah. like Reflet provides? Yeah. It, li it literally says, start coding an idea, Python, C, Java, or get started with tutorials, Python, advanced concepts, explanation. And then it says, learn a new language, Python. Uh, that's weird because it didn't show up for me. Um, can you share your screen or is that something that only the host can do? My iPad, uh, I could, I can switch my screen and show you it. Okay. Please do. It says over there. Um, are you sharing your screen right now? Uh, no. Uh, I'm. I switched my screen on my iPad. And I'm showing it on my computer. Okay. Uh, I'm having trouble with Zoom. I'll leave and then I'll come right back. Give me a second, guys. Can everybody see and hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Can you guys see me or? I can see you too. I can see okay. you. I cannot see myself. That's weird. Usually, you know, when you uh, share a video, you can see yourself and what you look like, but that's not the case for me. Weird. Also, uh, what was the problem you guys are having with um, uh, the tutorial on Replit and stuff. Do we press it or not? Uh, exit out of the tutorial. We have a um, class uh, activity planned right now, um, along with uh, teaching you guys how to use uh, Replit as well as how like specific like standard beginning basic java concepts is everybody back from the break i i assume i hope i'm back i have it i haven't left yeah okay all right let me share my screen again also if you guys like see my screen like froze or something like that tell me immediately Okay, uh, so right now, let me just, uh, can, you guys, can you guys see a screen that's similar to mine? Yeah. Okay. For those of you who do not see a screen that's similar to mine, um, 
type a type something in the chat i can see okay good everyone is on the same step i have to make sure everyone is on the same step uh, now click the plus sign that's under create Here you we will take to click on the language Java. Uh, some of you might have to scroll down for a bit to look for Java. Click, uh, click on Java. Now name your replet. Um, lesson one demo one or activity one. Let me just activity one. You can name it whatever, but I recommend that you name this something uh, related to lesson one, like lesson one activity one, lesson one activity, or lesson one demo. Could I write lesson one class one? Yeah, no problem. As long as uh, related to like the, our first class, so you can keep track because we will have activities every single lesson, and I don't want you guys to like mess it, like confuse anything up. Now, um. So you will be the owner. Um, make sure that you yourself are the owner of it and ignore the import from GitHub. We are not that high level yet. And um, you have to upgrade your account for private repl so replets. So just make sure it's um, public. You don't, I think it's automatically on public. You don't have to change anything. Just ignore this part. So what's important here is Java and the um, name of your replet. Any questions? Uh, I don't see any select ripple owner. Oh, you don't see this part? Nope. Okay, so is it uh is this part like completely hidden? Is, is this part like um does not exist? Yep. Okay, uh, who's talking? Uh, is it who who's talking? Is it Aunt William? The person can you guys hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. The person who just um said uh you choose public public um the person who said there's no choose owner um there is can't, no can't... choose owner there's no choose owner for me and okay. i can't i can't and, press and also it. not for me yes there's no choose owner okay that's weird um ignore it for now uh, i will check with the ta after class is over and get an answer to you guys for uh, for now. That's weird. Uh, I also haven't upgraded my account, um, but it's there for me. So uh, I will check with the TA and figure out why that is after class. Yes, we, you can create now. So creating takes a bit of time, and before we actually do code, I would I need to introduce to you guys um, what each part of actually is. So the files on the left side are the um, files where your each project is stored. Um, we don't need to take any mind that as of right now. Uh, what's important is the one on the left uh, in the middle and one on the right. So one, this one in the middle is where we actually write our code. You can see that there are, I can type stuff here, type stuff, and you guys should be able to type, type stuff as well. This is a comment, let me just delete that. And then here, this is the console. We don't need to take, you know, mind, give mind to the shell. The console is where we, our, our, the results of our code actually show up. Unless, any questions? No? OK. So uh, Rosalind, can you mute your mic? Oh, sorry. Rosie? Thanks. No problem. And uh, let's take a look at the code in the main Java right now. So this class name, so class is 
like um, you know you have pro you know you have uh, projects and you have different folders for different subjects. Let's say I have a math folder and I have a English folder. So those math and English materials for class belong in different folders, right? Class is kind of like that. So if you have uh, the code for, let's say, a math project, and you have the code for an English project, they belong in different folders. And class, see this one, class main, it um, puts the files into different, like classes are folders. It puts the code into different classes to um, better organize them. Now we have public static void main string arcs. This is the main method. And uh, what's, what's in this gets uh, printed first. So what, what this is actually is actually printed. Um, uh, no, maybe that might not be such a good explanation. Uh, so this is the most, just, just remember so far that public main static, public static void main is the most important part of each class. Now we have the system.out.println hello world. If we click run, this will, uh, this will print out hello world on the right. Now my computer is a bit slow, but you see it prints hello world. Let's dissect how that actually works. So system.out. Uh, is something that we don't need to uh, focus on right now. But what we do need to focus on is print line. So print, uh, let's copy this. And let's copy it again. Why is it doing that? But this time, I remove the print line. Now, let's see if you can spot the difference between the two, three uh, different lines. So you see the first one is normal. The second one and the third one, they are mashed together. So can anybody take a guess what print line and print are I, different? I, I think I know. Okay. Do I? All right, uh, you, got, you can shout the answer out. So print ln, the ln adds in, um, a return or an enter. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's just normal print, it won't uh, get an enter or a return line. So print ln prints on a new line. Very good, very good. So uh, print, uh, print ln or print line, as I say it, uh, gives a return after each line. So uh, you did a very good job. Round of applause. All right. Uh, now let's move on to the next uh, part. So we put what we want to print. Uh, Ethan, uh, how long did you, did you first, did you edit anything? Second, how long have you been wait, waiting? Yeah, so, okay, good, good, good. So if your connection, so Replit is an online IDE, so if your connection is really bad, it, that's why it might be so slow. Now let's move on to the brackets. The brackets is basically what you want to print in a, are in the brackets and in the quotation marks. Did someone say a question? Does someone have a question? No? Okay, so what you want to print belongs in the bracket and the quotation marks. Okay, so if we, let's say, if I remove the quotation marks and run it, it would give me a, oh, see the red line. It would give me an error message, so errors. So uh, what, if you want to print a, something, you have to put it in the brackets and the quotation marks. And you can put anything in here, honestly. Why is it doing that to me? But uh, you can print anything, honestly. You can print your name, you can print your age, you can print like anything out. Like if I print Cindy, that would work. All right, and um, the last thing, this semicolon is over here. 
is marks the end of a sentence. You know how we put a period at the end of each sentence when we write an essay? The semicolon is similar. It tells the computer that, hey, this command is over. Okay, this is all that it, it, there is in this command. Now, uh, with the semicolon, it's, uh, we move on to the next command. And then uh, the computer is like, oh, I understand. This is one command. This is one command. If you don't have the semicolon, the computer gets messed up. And it's, it's, if you, it's like a, a comma splice or a run on sentence, and the computer gets confused. Like, you're telling me I don't know what to do. It's, this is incorrect grammar. Okay, so the semicolon is very important. You put it at the end of each command. And now this is this is a command. Uh, I'll have to print stuff out. Does everybody understand? Any questions? If not, then we are going to introduce two new things. One is string. One is int. So let's dissect it. String can be anything, uh, can be a word, a character. It can even be a number, or it can be any special characters, like uh, exclamation mark, period, semicolon, question mark. A string can be anything. It can be a word. It can be like an essay, uh, a whole paragraph of words. It can be a single character. Uh, anything that you can type out on the keyboard can be a string. Uh, yeah, it can be a space as well. That's why I have it as a space. Now, name is what I want to name this string. I can name it uh, blue. I can name it. Yes, string is anything in quotations. Very good. Uh, I can name it pretty. I can name it Sarah, which is the name of my younger sister. I can name it Cindy. It doesn't really matter. All right. Uh, I chose to name it name. Uh, you, can, oh, you can also put like one, two, three numbers after it. Um, but usually the first one, um, I don't like to put numbers, but it's up to you. You can put like name one, name two. And then the equal sign is what the name is. Okay. Uh, I know you guys are used to equal signs in math uh, being like this is equal to this. You can think of it similarly, like uh, this string that's name is equal to whatever's in the quotation marks. If it's, uh, it's just the like expression of how to set something as something. Uh, I can put like fly or cow or any word in this and that, I, that could set the string as uh, what it is in the quotation marks. Uh, int is very similar. Um, I have age here, but int you can only do integers. If I try to do 17.10.3, I can't do that because that's a decimal. And decimals and integers are not the same thing. You guys remember that from math class? Yeah, that's, that is a float uh, or a double. Um, and double is, uh, double is another uh, thing, like really similar to float. Um, so... Decimals and integers are not the same thing. So int can only be like 10, any integers like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that stuff. We can set it to there. Oh, that's normal. Don't ignore the green marks. Uh, Replit has a um, set of like underlining stuff that you just like typed or clicked on. And it doesn't really matter. Um, so, so far, any questions about string or int? No? Okay. Now we are going to do an activity, although I don't know if we have enough time left. I'm going to introduce something called scanner. Now, I want you, to, I want you guys to type after me, uh, type when I'm typing. A scanner makes uh, you able to interact with the computer. And uh, let me let me do a demo. So now stop copying me and let me do a demo.
Hi, Shuhan, uh, what's your question? Slow down. I cannot catch up. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> going a little. You don't have to type. You don't have to type uh, all the things that I just typed. Okay. Um, this is just a demo, and uh, all you need to type is the import Java dot util dot scanner and this line right here. Oh, what's going on? Oh. Uh-huh, my bad. My name, copy here. Uh, this is just a demo a and we're running. Uh -huh. Okay, so now it's finally working good. So I typed out my name. This scanner makes uh, you... Why is there a dash there? Weird. But you can see um, it is able to uh, interact with me even if I say my name, uh, no matter what I say my name is. For example, I will use my sister's name, Sarah, right now. My computer is also lagging. If I say my name is Sarah, it also says, hi, Sarah. So now let's di dissect it. Let's dissect why that is. Uh, scanner scan, um, you guys don't need to know what this is right now because we're running out of time. I'll talk about that ne in next class. But um, if you set the name to scan.nextline, it will scan whatever um, I type in this line right here. And then um, you guys know, is I said earlier, it prints out what's in the quotation marks. But what if you don't, uh, but what if something that, what if you want to print something that's changing? Like uh, last time I said my name was Cindy, this time I said my name was Sarah. What if you want to print out something that's changing? Well, you don't put it in the quotation marks and you assign, and uh, you assign this like name, string name, I set it as blank. And then I set it as whatever uh, that comes next in this line over here. And then I put name over here, plus name. So I printed out hi and a comma and a space. And then it printed out whatever that uh, name is. Now, let me try running it again. And it, it can be anything. It, even if I say my name was mom, See, it was it will still say hi mom. I actually scheduled an activity where you guys write something similar to this, but um, since we are only have five minutes left, just do your best. Uh, you can change. You can you can change. You can also code repeat and code after me, but you can change this to hi. What is your age? And here we have. We can make page equals scan dot next int because uh, the next number that we will put in is an integer. So if I say seventeen, find seventeen. And if I see, I can change whatever's in this, uh, but what's age is dependent on what I type right here. So if I type 16, you are 16. Do you guys understand like how, oops, nope, how things change, how to uh, edit this? Now remember, a uh, int is stand on next int and String is scan dot next line. I don't know why I blanked out for a second there. Oh, and this is a comment. So comment is something that um, is not counted toward code. Comment is kind of like, a, you know how you comment on a Google Doc 
or leave a comment um, on, let's say you leave a comment on somebody's YouTube channel. Like, you know, everybody watches YouTube videos and there are comments down there, but the comments does not affect what goes on in the video. It's the same here. The comments that we put in our code does not affect how the code runs. Exactly, common is the thing that's ignored by codes. Oh, only developers. The, the computer automatically ignores it. So computer comes here, the computer finishes executing this command, it sees a semicolon, okay, let me move on to the next command. And then it sees this. Oh, well, this is a comment that the computer is like, oh, this is not a command for me. This is an instruction for telling me what to do. So I'm gonna skip this. I will, I will skip whatever is on this line. And then the computer goes to the next line and say, this is a command, let me execute this command. So for example, I have a line there. It, it, it completely ignores that line and moves on to the next line. Uh, you guys, we have two minutes left, okay. I am so sorry, I did not plan the lesson out as, um, as I expected there, because you guys were supposed to do an activity here. All right, hi, bye guys. I know some of you guys have to leave a little bit early, that's totally okay. Two more minutes. Um, oh, I thought that was a ghost or something. <laughs> and two more minutes. Um, you guys can change whatever this, you can change for your age. What's your favorite hobby? What books do you like to read? And then make um, whatever name as the next line. Well, can you, um, can you, um, so like, can you copy all of the, the things you typed on Reddit and put it in the chat so I can copy it? Well, this meeting is completely recorded. Put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Um, Thank you. Who is talking, by the way? Sophia. Oh, Sophia, hi. Uh, oh, yeah, right. You're the one who's having trouble getting Ripley set up. Okay. Get in now. Uh, yeah, recording should be sent to your email. And uh, accessing Ripley, you guys can just search up. You can access Ripley out of class. Um, it doesn't matter when or how. If you have an account set up, um, you can access Replit anytime. Also, class is over. If you guys don't have questions, you guys can leave. Um, 